Hi, Ignite. Well, I gotta say, I was really excited to finally see you all in person again after what has been, what, almost a year? Um, and here we go, another cancellation. However, I gotta say, doing church in our PJs once again, winter wonderland, I don't know about you, but we're gonna head out sledding right after church. Um, it's gonna be a great day. So, I'm excited to be here with you. I'm Emily Hartman, for those of you who don't know. And um, for today's lesson, I would like you to go grab a couple things, a couple pieces of paper, um, something to write with, and you'll want a few um, crayons, colored pencils, markers, something like that. So go ahead and pause this, go grab those, and then we will get started with a Mission Impossible question. Um, this is a super challenging question. Um, I'm gonna put up a slide and some music. You'll have 20 seconds to write down your answer. And we'll see if anybody can get it right. Um, although you guys are creative and I bet you'll have all kinds of cool answers. So go ahead and give this a pause. Um, when you're ready, hit start and jot down your answer to our opening question. Okay, so the answer to your impossible question is that all of those animals can freeze to death and come back to life, which is totally crazy. Now, they don't actually die, but it sure looks like it. Um, and it points us to how fascinating God's creation is, and it points us to our lesson of the day. But before we do that, we wanna talk a little bit about these iguanas because it's hilarious. Okay, so if your parents let you get on YouTube later, you could look up the top 10 animals that can freeze to death and come back to life. It's really interesting. It tells you about some of those creatures, but the iguanas, they're pretty funny. You can look up iguanas falling from trees, and um, what happens with them is if it's below 50 degrees, um, which isn't normal where they come from, um, their bodies start to slow down. If it hits 40 degrees or below, their bodies can't handle it, and they suffer from this immediate paralysis, and they appear dead, and they fall from trees, um, and there's news reports, as you can see on the screen, um, about iguanas falling from trees. There's this one where this lady comes, opens her back door, and looks outside, and there's like five iguanas just laying there in the yard. I mean, we're talking claws in the air, totally rigid, um, look totally dead, and then as soon as it starts to warm up, they get up and move along. Um, so there we go. There's your fun fact of the day, and um, God's creation's pretty cool. And now we'll move on to our lesson. Now that we've established that these animals don't really die and come back to life, even though it looks like it, your question is who really did die and come back to life? So this is your Jeopardy question. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds. I want you to write down as many people that you can think of. We're talking New Testament here. I will not give credit for answers from Marvel movies and things like that. So New Testament, who actually died and came back to life, you can give yourself $100 for every correct answer you get. And I am gonna be impressed if you guys come up with more than two or three. So here you go, ready, set, go. And the answer to your question is Jesus, of course. I hope you guys got that one. Lazarus, the widow of Nain's son. That was during a funeral procession, procession and Jesus put his hand um, on him and he came back to life. Um, Jairus' daughter, that was a, the 12-year-old where Jesus um, waited a while and then finally came and said, you know, she's just sleeping, get up. Um, and then we have the saints in Jerusalem. So when Jesus died, there was an earthquake. Um, and we don't know how many, but saints came back to life. We have Peter who raised Tabitha from the dead. Um, she's also known as Dorcas. I had to put that in there because I know that fifth and sixth graders would maybe get a giggle out of that one, but Peter raised Tabitha and then, um, Paul raised, um, Eutychus. That's actually kind of an, an amusing story too, because, um, Paul was preaching for so long that, um, this guy fell asleep 
And in falling asleep, he fell out of the open, you know, top floor story window and died. And so Peter raised him from the dead. So there's a number of people and um, hopefully you guys got, you know, at least a couple of those. And now we will jump into our story today, which is Lazarus. We're going to talk about John 11 and we're going to do a little review of John before we get started. All right, difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, we know that the New Testament is the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament prophecies, and Jesus is the fulfillment. He's the answer. So our first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're called the Gospels. They tell us about Jesus's life and teachings. And all of the Gospels are very similar, but in some ways there's different twists on them. Um, kind of like if, you know, you asked, hey, how was your, your Christmas? You and your brother might um, tell the same true stories, but there might be, you know, slight differences in what you remember or what was your favorite part or something. So one of John's big focuses that is different, uh, a little bit different than the other Gospels is he is really emphasizing that Jesus is God. He wanted people to understand that, that he wasn't just a, an important teacher or a really great guy, but he actually is God. So um, we will see that. And if we look at last week's lesson, it was on John 9, which was Jesus healing the blind man. And you also, um, John 10, I believe Josh said he has a um, prize next time we're in person for anybody who read that. So you have an extra chance if you want to do it. Um, and that is also getting at Jesus as the good shepherd. And you're starting to see hints of, of some people getting annoyed um, and wanting to arrest Jesus for his claims that he is God. So that brings us to John 11, which is our story of Lazarus. All right, guys, time to open up those Bibles. I want you to open them up and read John 11, 1 to 44. You can pause the screen here, and as you read it, I want you to be looking at these um, statements from the story, and I want you to put them in order just to kind of review for yourself what happened. And pay close attention to the details in here, because even if it's a familiar story, there's absolutely something new you might learn or something that God might have to teach you today. Um, that you might have missed before. So go ahead and pause. So let's review just a little bit. Um, the story opens with um, Martha and Mary, and so they're sisters, and their brother is Lazarus. And these guys, they knew Jesus very well. They were good friends. Every time Jesus was um, in town, he would visit them. They were very close. And they, Mary and Martha, send word to Jesus and say, hey, you know, our brother Lazarus, he's really, really sick. We need your help. They desperately needed his help. Well, Jesus um, didn't do anything about it for a couple days. And I want you to think, you know, put yourself in their shoes for a minute and think about what, what were they feeling there? You know, if your good friend reached out to you and, and was dying, um, you know, and you didn't do anything about it right away, didn't come visit right away or something like that, how would you feel? So they're feeling noticeably um, bothered by this and frustrated. Um, and Jesus ends up coming. Um, and uh, just a little background information. Um, when in Jewish custom, when somebody dies for three days, the mourners, the people who are sad, um, they stay in the home there. And the idea is that... Um, you know, after three days, there, there's no hope this person's going to be alive. But in those three days, um, you know, I don't know, maybe there was a chance they, they might have just been really sick or something. Um, so um, after four, you know, after the three days, there was always the notion of like, okay, there's no hope. He's really dead. Um, so Jesus shows up after those three days. Lazarus is buried in a tomb. And I'll pause here and show you guys a picture of it. They think that this might actually be the real tomb where Lazarus was buried. So as you can see, tombs were actually caves in those days. Um, so when Jesus starts coming, Martha greets him on the road and, you know, announces in faith that, you know, Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. So she did believe that Jesus could have healed them. Um, but Jesus ended up saying, you know what, I am the resurrection and the life and that Lazarus would live again. And they didn't really understand that. Um, everybody was surprised when Jesus commanded the stone to be rolled away from the tomb Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb and he came out and was alive and freed from his bindings. And, you know, God once again got glory for the miracle. 
So our big question is always, so what? Why did we read this? What does this have to do with our lives? And, you know, I think that that it can get at the question of why do bad things happen? You know, we always wonder that. Well, God can absolutely use our suffering for his glory. Um, You know, these people were suffering and God was able to do something truly amazing. Um, and God, you know, might not answer our prayers like we think. Sometimes, you know, the answer is yes. He's, he's going to answer our prayer right away. Um, sometimes it's we got to wait, and other times it's a no. Um, but God always has a plan there. And, you know, Mary and Martha really saw here the, the waiting. They expected Jesus to come right away. And, you know, there was a purpose in that, that it built their faith. It showed them that he really can do anything. If Jesus had come right away when Lazarus was just sick, this wouldn't have been such a dramatic miracle. And, um, you know, there was no question about it. Lazarus was dead. Everybody knew it. And now he's alive. Um, So Jesus did something amazing there. So there was a purpose in that waiting. Um, And, you know, we can have faith um, that Jesus can do anything. This was an amazing miracle. He did it. Um, There's always a purpose in our challenges, and he promises that in all things, he has a plan. God has a good plan for each of you. Um, Even when we have challenges, there's, there's something there that we're supposed to learn or some way that he will absolutely bring good out of it. Um, and another takeaway that, that we'll do an activity with in just a couple minutes is um, Jesus prayed. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but um, right before he called Lazarus out of the, the tomb, he prayed. And that's something, you know, sometimes that we forget to do when we're having hard times or even when times are good. Um, we need to remember to, to pray. Um, and another thing too, you might've noticed is Jesus cried. Um, that was an interesting thing and, and that's okay. And Jesus felt sadness and he came to earth as a man, um, to, to understand our suffering and whatever we're going through, um, he understands it and we can go to him in prayer. Um, and we are going to look at a quick, um, art activity that we're not going to actually do. Um, but I want to show it to you because it kind of throws in sort of another, um, image of the takeaway. So this is a little, um, activity that if we were in person, we would have done. Um, it's called the big picture and, you know, Jesus knew that God had a plan for Lazarus, but, um, Mary, Martha, and the disciples didn't understand that plan. They thought it was going to turn out differently. So I want you to look at these pictures. You've got half of a bus, half of a football, half of a flower. So if you were to sketch that, you know, it may not look exactly like you want it to, or exactly like, you know, the photograph part, um, but that's okay. And God is writing the second half of our story, um, or the rest of our story, and he's going to write it out to be good. No matter what happens, he is going to bring glory to his name, just like um, in Lazarus's first part of his story. And in that suffering, he was able to bring glory to God's name. I don't know about you, but I think that this story of Lazarus gives us some pretty awesome takeaways and lessons that we can take to heart and remember. Um, And we are going to close right now with an activity called a prayer pizza. And after that, we will move on and do um, just a final Bible verse. I'll give you a Bible verse challenge and a final prayer. So for this prayer pizza, I will show you what it's going to look like. Um, And it's just an exercise to help us remember to pray and remember that there is amazing power in prayer. It is time to make a prayer pizza. You don't have to have a pizza box. We just happen to have one from dinner there. Um, And you are going to make your own prayer pizza. You can do this on a paper plate like I did, or you can just take your piece of paper and cut it into a circle and get ready. The idea of doing this prayer pizza is that there is a power in prayer. And Jesus prayed, um, Mary and Martha reached out to, to Jesus, and we need to too. And so this is going to be just a reminder for us this week. Um, so what I want you guys to do is divide your paper, your pizza, into at least six slices. And you can use the same topics that I did, or you can pick your own. Um, the ones I picked is prayer for people who are sick or in need. And I want you guys to list specific um, people um, in, in each of these. Um, and the next one I have is prayers that God will help me grow. So list specific things like God help me to remember to read my Bible every day. Help me to um, remember to pray for so-and-so and so on. Um, next one, I have prayer for family and friends. Um, you can list some of them. 
Uh, prayer for our country and our leaders. You can list those. Prayer for my church, and you can list leaders in the church there. Um, prayer for people I know who don't know Jesus. List those people. Um, and then once you have done that, go ahead and decorate it. Put your favorite pizza toppings on it. And I want you, for your challenge this week, um, keep this somewhere where you'll see it. Maybe right by your bed or on your fridge or something. And your challenge is to, to actually do it. Let's pray for all of these things and all of these people um, and reach out to God because we know that there's power here and that God wants to answer our prayers and that um, with faith in God, God can do anything. Okay guys, so pause your screens, do a nice job on your prayer pizzas, make sure you use them this week. Um, if you if you get a chance, bring it next week or send Josh a picture of it. Um, he would love to, all of us would love to encourage you. Um, and I do know, I think he's got a new um, candy stash. He likes reward with those too. So um, if you tell him about it, I bet he'll have something for you next week. Um, so pause it, work on your prayer pizza, and then we'll be ready for a couple closing things. So we've got a pause here for our final Jeopardy question. i uh, give you something to do here. So I want you to write down as many of the I am statements of Jesus as you can. Today's that we're highlighting is I am the resurrection and the life. And I want you to see how many other ones you can get. You have 20 seconds. Ready, set, go. Give yourself one hundred pretend dollars for every one of these you get correct. Obviously, you should have "I am the resurrection of the life" uh, and the life. And Jesus said, "I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine." Give yourselves a pat on the back or your, you know, fake money, and we will move on. We are going to finish up with our Bible verse of the week, John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And this is such an amazing verse. You know, for Lazarus, Lazarus, he did die and come back to life. Um, but for all of us, if we believe in Jesus, when we die, we can live forever with Christ in heaven. And um, let's end in prayer. God, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that... Um, you can bring good and use suffering for your glory. We thank you that you always have a purpose in our challenges. Um, and we thank you that you have a plan, a good plan for us. And we thank you that we can have faith that in you we can do anything uh, or that you can do anything. And we pray that you'll be with us this week. Um, remind us to pray to you um, and to ask you for help and um, help us to live for you this week. And we thank you for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everybody.